but for Messiah is Christ. Christ. So we only look at man absolutely needs Christ. And already in lesson four, let us understand the essence of the problems. So it means that the problem was so much that man himself can't fix the problem. And don't forget that we said there are three major problems that humankind that we have. There's the problems of sin, the problems of Satan, and our separation from God. So, and human being as we are, we are limited because we have already separated. So we can solve the problem. And in this way, we can see that we'll be trying to solve this, use political stuff, to use the economical stuff. We'll be using our own wisdom, technology, scientists, everything to solve the problem. Even UN also organize UN so that it can be able to solve this problem, but we've not been able to solve the problem because we have been separated from God. We've separated from the purpose of our existence. So, and that's why that's absolutely needed for Christ to come. So God gave us the, the promise, you know, that he will send the Messiah, the Christ will come, and he's going to be the one that will solve the problem. So we could see the essence, the essential problem is Satan, sin, and being separated from God. So every other problem, that, every other challenge, problem we may face in life comes as a result of these three, three, yeah, yeah, the, the three problems. So now we look at the state of man in the beginning from Genesis chapter Three, we could see how God formed man in Genesis chapter three, and God breathed into man. So it means that man was nothing because God formed man from the dust. So it means we can't live by ourselves. It was when God breathed upon us that man becomes a living, so a living being. So it means that the essence of our living is God. We depend on Him. So Bible in Him we live, we move, and have all our being. So without God, even though the world is going formulating different philosophy, individualism, living life without God, we can do it by ourselves. Man was not created to live by himself. We were created to be with God. Yeah, so we could see that Michael never solved these problems by himself, and that's why it's absolutely necessary that someone should solve these problems. Now, so what's the meaning of Christ? We want to look at it. What's the meaning of Christ? The meaning of Christ is the anointed one. The anointed one. Who is a true king, true priest, and also a true prophet. And we know that in the Old Testament, we know that there are three people that have been anointed. The priest who serves to at least atone for the sins of the people. Whenever sins, uh, people commit sins, the yeah, it's a mediating between yeah. God and, yeah, to, and he himself also has to sacrifice for his own sin. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, because he was not a perfect mm -hmm. person. Is here. And also, Kings were also anointed, and we could see that through the life of Saul. Mm -hmm. When God shows, I mean, people show Saul as a permissive way from God, that Saul was anointed. So kings were also anointed to defend their own community, to fight to win against their enemy. Mm -hmm. And we could see that throughout the life of uh, David, who seems to be like a perfect king, will also have his own shortcoming. Right? So also true prophet. Prophet also were also anointed in the Old Testament. So we could see all the prophet, the former prophet, and the latter prophet from Joshua all through to Malachi. So we could see how they were anointed, and when they anointed, they bring God's message to the people. So we could see the manifestations of that in the life of Elijah. So when Elijah went to the Mount Carmel, and he gathered all the Israelites, that they've departed from God. And through the miraculous manifestations of God's power through Elijah, so the Bible said the people's heart turned back to God. Mm -hmm. So prophets were there to bring message from God and bring whenever people go away from God, then prophets were anointed to bring them back to God. So, but we could see that all the prophets, the priests, the kings that we have in Old Testament, they were not able to solve these three the problems, three problems yeah. because they themselves were even seen us. Yes. See, so and so we could see that the true king. Who solves the problem of Satan, the true priest that solves the problem of sin, the true prophet who solves the problem of man being separated from God is the Christ. Alone. Is the Christ. So when Christ came, so he fulfilled that, he fulfilled, he played that role, which is the meaning of Christ, that is the one who has the capacity, the ability, who has the everything to solve the problem of Satan, sin, and separation from God. So he will solve all problems that come as a consequence of sin, uh, Satan, and separation from God is Christ. Now, don't let us forget this, because people might make a mistake and say, oh, 
because he fulfilled it. That's why he's Christ. No. He was Christ. See? So it's not that he fulfilled it, then that make him to be Christ. No, he's Christ. He's the only Christ who can fulfill that. See? So and that's why that all human beings have tried, prophet, priest, everything they've tried. We could even see Moses, how Moses wept before God to see how he could bring the people back to God. But it was so invaluable. Now let's look at the God promised the Messiah Christ. See? Now we could see that close to 300 prophecies were made about the Messiah, about Christ. Because God said that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of Satan, of the serpent. Mm -hmm. So we could see that seed. He didn't use plural. Mm -hmm. He didn't say seeds. Yeah. He said seed. seed. Yeah, which was what God has already planned. Because God has intention. God's intention is that we will become his people and he will be our God. Mm -hmm. So that we will be together. Mm -hmm. And we could see how Adam enjoyed that fellowship of being with God in the Eden. So now, so God promised so prophet came, they prophesy. So the priest and all the people, they wrote everything about the coming Messiah. Mm. So about 300 or more prophecies right. were written about his, how he's going to be born, his birth, his passion, his ministries. Mm. You see, how he will live his life, how he will also die. It talks about his death and how he also resurrected or also prophesied. Mm. And the coming of the Holy Spirit through him. Were also prophesied. Mm -hmm. Then that it will it will come back second time was also prophesied. Okay. All in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the Old Testament promised the true king, true priest, and the true prophet. Mm -hmm. And we could see that it is promised that it will solve the problem of Satan. Not that just Christ will come and just perform miracles, perform signs, mm -hmm. then everybody will say, Oh, he's so famous. No. He has an agenda. He has a purpose why he came. So he came to solve our problem of Satan, of sin, and separation from God. So let's read Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Even though I've, I've talked about it briefly, but I think it's good if we look at the, the Bible. So, yeah, yeah, I say, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and thy seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You know, so it's talking of authority, talking of solving that problems, right? So we could see that one and all the verses in the Bible. Also the problem of sin, that it will also solve the problem of our sin in Isaiah chapter 53. Let's read Isaiah chapter 53. The book of Isaiah, you know, so the, the book of Isaiah chapter 53 was, was called a, a Messianic uh, chapter, you know. So we could see from verse 3, 5, and 6 that he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the shatismance of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So we could see how the prophet prophesied that when Messiah come, when Christ come, he will solve the problems of our sin. And Bible says he carried that. We could see it even on the cross when he cried, Eli, Eli, Nabasabakhtani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So for the first time, we could see God forsaking God because he himself is God. So he forsook him because he became sin. So Isaiah 53 talks about that. He, the sin disfigured him. That there was nothing in us to admire him. You know, so sin disfigures. So he disfigured Christ on the cross. The Bible says that the eyes of God is purer than to behold sin. So God could not see sin because it became sin. Right? So he solved that problems. Amen. And not only that, he also solved the problems of our separation from God. So we could see that Isaiah 4, 7, 14, Isaiah prophesied that a virgin shall conceive and bear for the son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel is that God with us. That is, he will bring us back to God so that we can enjoy fellowship and oneness with God, so that we can be able to fulfill the purpose of our creation. We are created according to Ephesians chapter 1 that we are created to praise him to, praise to give glory to his name okay. so it is promised that all problems will be solved through christ amen, amen. 
So Isaiah chapter 9, we could see that it talks about God give us a son, a son was born and a son was given. We could see that government will be upon his shoulder and his kingdom shall be forever. forever. That his name shall be called Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. So here demonstrate that Christ will come and fulfill that. So it is promise, it's a prophecy. Is a prophecy and we could see that in psalm 23 verse 1 say that the lord is my shepherd so i have everything oh i have i love the version that says i have everything you know i, I love that one that the one that says, i shall know one so now i have everything so so god so god pro prophesied that the christ will come who will be our shepherd and that's why john chapter 10 talks about him when he came that i am a good shepherd he, he said there are many shepherds but they were thieves Say, but I am the good I shepherd. Also said, I, lack nothing. I lack nothing. God is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Why? Because why do I lack, why do I lack nothing? Why do I have everything? Because I've seen that what is problems in my life, he mm -hmm. came, he solved it. Mm -hmm. Which is problem of my sin, mm -hmm. problem of Satan so domination over my life. Am I so from. now we are no more separated because he came to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. So this prophecy was given that Israel as a nation were passing this message from one generation to another. So they were awaiting the coming Christ, the coming Messiah. So even though they have a misrepresentation and understanding of how Messiah will come, but they were longing because they went through a lot of slavery, a lot of colonization from different countries, but they have hope that one day the Messiah will come and it will set us free. It will restore the kingdom of, of Israel. So even though when he came, many of Israel did not believe, but till now they're still waiting for the desire to come. So they hold on to that covenant. They hold on to him from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to all their, their, their generations. They hold on to that covenant. So we could see the demonstration of that in John chapter 4 verse 25. We could see John chapter 2, 12 verse 12 to 13. Acts chapter 1, 6. In John chapter 4 verse 25, we could see how the Samaritan woman and Jesus Christ were discussing at the well that she told Christ that ah, that's a promise. Uh, John chapter 4. John chapter 4 verse 25. Yes, about the woman. Yeah, the yeah. Samaritan woman. Yes. Yeah, the Samaritan woman was talking that, that oh, all what Jesus was telling the woman, the woman said, ah, we know we were holding to a covenant that when Christ come, he will show us all things. He will tell us the truth. We will be free. You no, know, she was holding to it. And she ran, that, have met a man. Could it be the Christ? He, he told me everything about, about myself. You know, we could see that. And also in Acts chapter 1, 6, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we could see that even the disciples, even though they followed him, but they were still holding on to that covenant. They now said, Master, Christ, my Lord, when will you return now? When will you restore the kingdom of Israel? See, they were holding to that. That is only the Christ who can restore that kingdom.